Okay, welcome back. Let's get this going again. Um, story I meant to tell earlier. Um, I had a parking ticket. Um, where I worked, they would take it constantly. And I think, Rob, you mentioned it was all really about money when it came right down to it. But these guys, every Wednesday, would come out and they would ticket the entire street, probably 200 worth of cars. So I got this ticket. Unfortunately, my friend Mike Miracle here, um, we went into court. And uh, it was a good time. That was the one that they uh, literally kicked us out with the bail. It was a good time. That's 40 bucks I ever spent. So, uh, you got it on video. And it's on video. <laughs> so, the basic gist of it is the first round they threw us out, whatever, I filed for an appeal. Well, I forgot to show up to court, so therefore I get a default ruling. However, because they had spent so much money trying to collect that ticket, about a year ago now, they have not been back to that street to ticket once. So, anyone that tells me it's not about money, now we have something to show otherwise. Um, there's a lot of money in that street to be made, but they're losing it when people fight. So I guess the long way of saying it is, which I should have done to begin with, is fight. Win, lose, draw, fight, you cost them, you bleed them, they will stop doing what they're doing. Now, with that said, I'd like to introduce you to another friend of mine, Mike Lavecchi, paralegal, and Mike, you are speaking on the jurisdiction area. Mike, the floor is yours. Oh, gee, thanks. Can we change the carpet? We can raise it. Yeah, a little bit. Give me that side movement there, if you would. Or here? Yeah, please. That's good. That's good. Yeah, all right. You sit in there standing. I can move the damn thing. Yeah. Too bad everybody left already. Hey, we're still here. Yeah, you guys are still here. Yes, we are. Okay. I have a uh, feather in my head. It's like what Rob just says about uh, fighting. Okay, if you come to realize that the whole government is a lie, do you continue to, par to participate in it? Okay, people have their precious inherent rights under the Constitution and should never feel guilty when exercising these rights during police encounters. And that was a statement from Joseph McNamara from San Jose, police chief. If you do the research and discover that the income tax is voluntary, do you continue to volunteer? These are some of the things that people need to think about as they're doing their studying. Okay, everybody should have a library, a law library of some sort, whether it be a computer where you can do legal research, have access to Lexis or the law library up at UB. They've got a free law library. Anybody can go and research anything they want. But one of the main things that everybody should have and learn is a pocket constitution and keep it with you at all times because these are what our rights are secured with. And there's plenty of good guys on the internet that have show after show on the Constitution and how it pertains. And one of those is, uh, you can go to YouTube for Carl Miller, he's really good. And uh, the Constitution, he's the Constitution man. And he gets right into it real well. And he's, he's real easy to listen to. Some guys are hard to listen to and they're real boring. Like me. But one of the things about the Constitution is one of the main things is the 11th Amendment. You never hear much about it. But the, the 11th Amendment says the judicial power of the United States shall not be construed to extend to any suit in law or equity commenced or prosecuted against one of the United States by citizens of another state or by citizens or subjects of a foreign state. So basically what that's doing, it's taking away the power of these courts to bring, come after us. When we get into these courts, we have to raise the 11th Amendment. Because if we don't, they just steamroller over everybody. Okay, as the next thing is the 
the jurisdictionary law course. Is anybody familiar with that? I know Rob has his inter. Uh, Mike and Rob, they know about it. But do you guys know anything about jurisdictionary, the law course? Okay, what it is? It's a it's a course that was designed by Frederick, Dr. Frederick Graves, out of Florida, who's a trial attorney. And he got sick and tired of watching the court steamroller over everybody who comes in pro se. And as he was saying, their arguments were on the money. They had the laws, they had a lot of the different things they needed, but they didn't have the procedure to properly put their case together, and they always lost. Well, it bothered him so bad that one day, as he was facing retirement, he thought, well, what can I do for my country? So he put together, from his point of view as a trial attorney, a, a really good one, who lost very, very little, uh, this course to teach the pro se's like we are, and those that can go into court and win without an attorney, or even with one. If you do have an attorney, what it does, the course, it'll teach you on how to keep your, your the attorney and the judge at bay and to keep them following the law because you know what the law and their jobs are and you can keep them to task. So this course, it's, it's, a, it's a four uh, CD course. There's a video uh, that's, it's pretty long, it's about a 20, in a, in a weekend, two days, 48 hours, you could go through the entire course. And it's set up easy enough for an eighth grader to understand. And what I'd like to do is to put together a, a group in this area that we could have meetings on the jurisdictionary, go through it and discuss it, ask questions, and have everybody understand how to plead their case, whether it be traffic or the dog license or zoning or anything of that nature, traffic, parking, uh, child custody, uh, family court matters, domestic, whatever the case might be. And with this Agenda 21 and the zoning people coming down on everybody so hard, and I know in the little town where I'm from, they have a law that says, a zoning ordinance that says your grass can only be six inches tall. If it's over that, then they fine you, and it's like a $250 fine, and they can take your home away and everything else. I mean, this is communism in the, in the, from the get-go. We've got to fight this stuff, and we need people that, are, that have the backbone, the stamina, and the courage. And the main thing about having a group is the whole group is there with you. And we're all in this together. And we're here to help each other. And if it's a court, we'll all show up at court if possible. And we'll be there for somebody else to, to fight their case and to help them. And one of the things that I suggest, which was brought up on one of the internet shows off of AIB, is that anybody who attempts to get into this fight, which is, it's costly. And not, not just in money only, but in your life, in your time, in your family. And I've lost marriages over it. I've lost property over it. But I haven't given up. And in my travels and in my years, I've learned a lot that I didn't know in the beginning, which would have saved me a lot of headaches at that time. But one of the main things I never had was having a power of attorney of a friend. Somebody to whom, if and when, I ever get thrown in jail or get prosecuted that's there on the outside for me and with the power of attorney they can file papers for you they can plead your case for you and they can put the stuff together and you don't have to worry when you're sitting there looking at the four bare walls in solitary confinement because you won't play along with their game and take their their phony injections that you know that somebody's out there fighting for you so that's something that everybody should think about and uh once, once you do that and to have it with you at all times and as long as somebody has somebody there to help you out when you're doing this kind of work. But in this law course, what he does, uh, there's, there's four CDs, or there's two CDs of audios and there's two DVDs. One is the PDF files that uh, I'll get into what they're about. But the one video, he gets into the introduction and the planning of a lawsuit a fl lawsuit flowchart, the causes of action. In the causes of actions, he gives a, a variety of different actions and he, the elements, all the things necessary to have a cause of action. And he attacks this in a way where he's explaining it 
if you are a plaintiff and you want to sue your neighbor, or you want to sue the police officer or a judge, or if you're a defendant and you get served paperwork, whether it's rightfully served or wrongfully served, he gets into the elements of the causes where you, turn apart, you tear apart the elements and you will find pretty much in every case that's against you, the elements aren't all there. And if there's one element missing, that element will destroy the whole case. And they'll have to get rid of the case. And I've won three cases myself, uh, personally, uh, two in family court and one in traffic court, with elements. The elements weren't there. So they didn't have the jurisdiction to, to do the case. Okay, after, the, and I used his method to do this, so it was well worth the $249 for me because I know a retainer is a lot more than $249. And this course itself is, uh, you keep it on your shelf, keep it by your computer, you refer to it from time to time. And if you're going to work and one of your neighbors or your worker friends are having a problem with the, with the law or some situation, then you can bring, have them come over to your house or go to their place and you guys can sit down and go through this jurisdictionary and help this guy out. And he can do the same thing with his buddies. Okay, after we go through the causes of action, he frames the pleadings, how you file your pleadings and how you put them all together. Okay, then he goes through and does a simple complaint uh, explains a simple complaint, and then he gets into a multi-court complaint after the, si the simple complaint. And then there's um, simple sentences. One of the problems us patriots have is we want to talk too much. We want to say too much. We want to pretend like we're lawyers. We want to put long, big, heavy words in there. And things, a lot of them sometimes, we don't even know what they mean. But we heard lawyers talk about them, or we might have read them. But he says, keep it simple. There's no reason to go with the great big giant words because judges probably aren't going to read the paperwork anyway. Okay, then he gets into, talks about a summons and who's to serve the summons, when you do the summons. After that, goes through the verification, which is a lot like an affidavit. And what that does, it, uh, you're swearing under oath that the paperwork that you're putting together filing into the court, whether it be a motion or a notice or a pleading or whatever the case is that you're doing it under the penalties of perjury, you're not lying and committing fraud and trying to railroad somebody. Okay, after the verification is the answer. And uh, after the answer, uh, in the answer is uh, a certificate of service, how to file a certificate of service, how to do a counterclaim, how to do cross claims, how to do third-party complaints, and avoiding the answer. If you're served a lawsuit, one of the things he stresses upon is don't file the answer. There's a flurry of motions that we're able to do within that case to prevent from answering the complaint. And it's like a traffic ticket when you're, you're stopped for a, a license plate out or a ball tire or maybe uh, inspection or something of that nature or speeding. The issue is not, no, I wasn't speeding. How do you know I was speeding? Let me see the radar thing. You don't want to traverse with them. You want to demur. And demur is when you don't join issues with them. And so by not joining issue with them, you're attacking them on the procedure. You know, where is your authority to stop me? Where is the jurisdiction? Do you own the highway? Is it your road? And there's a couple things that I have on... Uh, on the traffic 